So the last gospel artist I talked about was Kim Burrell's social media takedown. But this one is Lee Andrea Johnson's breakdown. All right, let's talk about her here on Non Free Project. All right, y'all, this is James from the Free Project. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and <laughs> talk about this Leandra Johnson thing. And, I, I, and I'm telling you, I sort of understand where she's coming from. But there are some things that I really want to break down level of, yes, we understand you're in the gospel industry. I understand you have heard, had some church hurts, but understand this, dot, dot, dot. So that's really where I want to take it. And this is no... Throwing stones at Leandria Johnson. She has the right to feel the way that she's built based on her experiences and her reactions to the things that she's seen over the years growing up in church. But let's look at some of the things that she is that she noted in some of her her quote unquote rants online. And so I'm just gonna break those down here. So we're gonna go through them one by one. Okay, one of the things that she talked about is having her First Amendment right to say what she wants to say without having to be vilified and or have there have to be a cost behind it. And you know what? I agree with you on that. You should have the right to say what you want to say and without those type of repercussions that can cause you your entire career. However, Leandria or however other people who are in the gospel industry, I can't even say the word, you have to understand that you are in an industry. And if you think of industries, industries produce a product to sell to the consumer. So therefore, there is a product that has to be sold by the industry and you are a part of that product. So therefore, you are going to have a team of people to create a package that will be palatable to the people. Regardless if you're singing rock, opera, regardless if it's rap, country, R&B, pop, whatever, gospel music, you are producing a product that has to be sold to the consumer. And so when you sign that dotted line, at that moment, you become a commodity. At that moment, you have sold your talents, your gifts to a company that will take care of their vested interest in you. So for them, they are going to take care of their bottom line first. And despite what you may be experiencing, and if you are part of that bottom line and you are affecting that, then trust and believe there's going to be change made so that their bottom line is protected. Now, on the flip side of that is that also you are a part of the gospel music industry. So therefore, you are going to have fallout from gospel artists and within the church community as a whole simply because you represent a religion. You represent a mode of thinking. You, you represent God. And so therefore, there is a lifestyle that comes along with that. And so you may not like it, but it's a part of the, the, it's a part of the package. That's the same thing as when we find out that, let's say, that's the same thing as if we were to find out a judge, uh, some, uh, some, someone on the Supreme Court or a doctor were to do something that is, quote unquote, beneath them. And that's what it is, because the office and the job, it comes with a certain mindset. It comes with a certain level of, of expectations and of living. It's like you're not going to go work for a lawyer's office if you have a credit score of 300. It's not going to happen. They're not going to hire you. It's just not going to happen. No, there are things that they expect from you to in order to be on that level. And so with that in mind... You know, you do have the right to say what you want to say, but trust and believe you're go there's going to be a cost attached to it. And then secondly, as a believer, you are the face of gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ. Then there are some expectations. Now, granted, we do have the grace of God that covers a multitude of our faults and sins. And yes, we are supposed to walk in that grace and, and try not to do the things that our flesh wants to do. Now, do we stumble and fall at times? Absolutely. No one's holding that, that against you. But the thing is, is that when you place yourself in the eye of the public, then there is a certain, especially from a Christian perspective, then there's a, 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 there's a certain expectation that people have of you. Although, yes, we understand you're human, but also keep in mind that you represent the kingdom. And therefore, in represent the kingdom, there's, there is a lifestyle that comes along with it. And that's scripture. There's, that's Bible. So you, we can fuss and fight about that all day long. And you're going to, quote, unquote, keep it real. But trust and believe that in keeping it real, you can also defame the name of Jesus Christ. Now, also, I get your frustration with the church. I mean, I've had frustration with the church for a very long time. And so then when I came away from really being so enamored with the four walls of the church and understood that I am the church, that I am a part of the body of Christ and that 
that the field that God has given me or the harvest is out there in the streets. And then therefore I started working within that realm. And so I'm not confined to the four walls of the church. And unfortunately, sometimes people make the four walls of the church their God. I mean, I've seen people who they worship everything Kojic. They worship everything Baptist. They worship everything Presbyterian. They worship everything quote unquote, Mormonism, but that's a whole different story right there. But the whole thing about it, and they worship their pastor or their pastor's wives, the first lady. And because they do that, then they miss the mark. Whenever you start putting a church, an organization, a religion, uh, or even just praise and worship above God himself, then you have made a God out of that thing. And so what happens is that you see so many people who are raised in church. Oh, I'm the pastor's assistant. I carry his bag. You know, I help him when he goes and, and makes his plans and his flights and all that kind of stuff. And so they're so caught up in the positions of church and their ego gets stroked. And then because they are in the quote unquote inner circles, they don't know what else to do because that becomes them. And they lose themselves in all of that inner circles and being behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff. Trust me, I know because I used to be at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of Bishop Eddie L. Long. And I've been behind the scenes. Now, I wasn't deep, deep, but I have been behind the scenes. And because of that, I understood at that very moment in time, don't get hyped up because of this person right here. The only person you need to be hyped up about is Jesus Christ. And when you allow humanity, humans, men, mankind, first ladies, and all that kind of stuff, the usher board, and all those kinds of things that will take place of God, then you have made idols in your life. And when those things fall and crumble and make mistakes, then it's because of that you start to cry. It's because of that you stumble. It's because of that you lose sight of what your walk was truly supposed to be about. And it was supposed to be about pleasing God through Jesus Christ and living as he has called you to live. And that doesn't mean living like the pastor. Okay, so your pastor may have a Bentley. Your pastor may ride around in a Mercedes. And that's the whole thing that's got me with this whole prosperity gospel or over the years as a reason why I've had a back and away, in a sense, from the four walls of the church. Because what I realized is that when I used to go to manpower conferences and, and you know, when Atlanta, they would have a woman that would lose, but there was a lot of men there as well. But a lot of those conferences are hype messages. That's all they are. They are hype messages. And then when you are charging people three and four hundred dollars to sit down and hear and sit at your feet so you can put on these conferences and all of that and then give them information they may or may not use, which is really almost found in the Bible. If you sit there and you pay attention. Now, if you will go see Les Brown, who is a businessman and entrepreneur, and that's all you're talking about and that's how he makes his living, then fine. That's something completely different because you're going to hear a public speaker speak. But you as a minister of the gospel, you are charging people hundreds of dollars to come hear you talk about stuff that's already in the Bible. So if people would just stop, get their fork and spoon and dig into the Bible and start eating for themselves, then they probably wouldn't have these issues and they probably wouldn't be mad at the church and they probably wouldn't be upset. Now, one thing you have to understand that God is in control of all of this. So while you sitting up there chasing the money, chasing the fame and chasing the fortune and chasing the first lady and the pastor, you need to be chasing God because God is going to be the author and the finisher of your faith. And at the end of the day, if he says you're going to be a millionaire, he's going to make it happen. As long as you're submitting to him and using that money for the kingdom, for kingdom business and for nothing else. You start letting that get to your head and get to your heart, then you have issues. So we all can play into that and it's easy to play into that. But the thing is, is that what you have to understand is that God is not, the, everyone is not supposed to be out here being a millionaire. And if God does make you one, there's a purpose behind all that money. There's a purpose behind it, all that having all that wealth. You know, you can't preach that same prosperity gospel over in Africa. You can't preach that same thing. And if you do, then you're going to look crazy trying to preach that stuff. It's only in America where we are so flesh driven, where we want, 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 consume, 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 that it really works. And so you see people falling behind these preachers and pastors and they waiting on their, their ship to come in. They waiting on these blessings to come in. They waiting on them. You know, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And I trust me, I went through all of that year after year after year. And then what happened? Happens when you realize that yes, the pastor is still rich because he's sitting there getting um, getting money off your off you weekly or monthly. But and don't get me wrong, yes, I do believe for those true pastors that are working out there and and doing what they are supposed to do. They the Bible is very clear. You don't do not you know you don't bridle the oxen while he's pulling the grain. They have to be fed. They they have a they have to do what they have to do as well. 
But it, at the same time, is there a balance to all that? Absolutely. Get into the word and find out what it says about uh, those who, who preach the gospel, gospel to also live by the gospel. There's nothing wrong with supporting your pastor. That man goes out there and he and, and if he's a true pastor and that he is, quote unquote, serving his people, the flock that God has given him. Absolutely. I have no problems with giving him a few dollars so he can continue to do what he's doing. If he has to go to work, then he has to go to work. But it's a whole different thing when you're... <laughs> Your pastor sitting up there with all these rings on his finger and all these $500 suits. And then he's riding around in Bentleys and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And you look at the community around him. Then you have to say that there's an imbalance right there. Something just, something like Keith Sweat said, something, 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 something just ain't right. So with that being said, we've got to take our eyes off the preacher and the pastor and the pastor's wife. I don't care if you hold her purse while she's up there evangelizing. That don't make you special in her eyes and that don't make you very important in the eyes of God. Trust and believe. You seek God daily. You seek after Christ and he will take you to places and positions. And doesn't, that doesn't always mean that you're going to have to get you that you're getting up on stage. Everybody gets so concerned with having an important title or position. Some of the greatest people in the gospel, look at the apostles. They suffered for the kingdom. They suffered. And we get concerned with whether or not we're going to be riding around in a caddy or in, in a Mercedes, in, 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 in this big, big body car. No, it, that's not important. It is not important. You 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 got you want a mansion. That's not important. You know, we live in that blessed life. Yay, we live in that. You know what? I have nothing with being blessed because I'm you know what my family is we're gonna be in this apartment for a few for a few months right now until we uh buy a house now. Now let me see you let me show you the blessings of God. We don't even have to pay for it. I, I just <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna you, you know what? God is taking care of us. Trust and believe. And it's all because of using the gift that God has given me. And in the field that I work in. So that's a blessing in disguise. And so I'm like, baby, we're going to buy. And then we're going to buy our house. So the thing is that stop looking at people and what they can do. And, and, and mean, what they have. And, and, and get focused on the things of God. Yes, the Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, yes, God will take care of you. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're the one that's supposed to be riding around in the Lexus, Hummus, Beamers, and the Benz. No. Come on. Let's not get so caught up in the thing. Now, the issue of paying tithes and expecting to be blessed and, and being rich and all that kind of stuff because you've been paying tithes for the past 10 years. I'm not even getting into that conversation. I'm not even getting into that conversation. But again, keep in mind that you become a product of an industry. You are in the music business and industry. Everybody got duped when they found out Whitney Houston was somewhat ghetto. Okay. Now, for those of us who didn't know her from where she's from, you know, we were somewhat surprised when we started seeing her smoking and cussing and drinking and carrying on because the product that they sold to us, that Arista sold to us was this pristine image of this nice pop, you know, chocolate girl who could sing her, to sing her behind off. But yet and still, you know, we saw this, this well poised and proper and pristine young lady. But yet when we saw her being on being Bobby Brown, my mouth was like, oh, my gosh, is this the Whitney Houston that's belted out? I will always love you. You have got to be kidding me. It was like two different people. Again, that was the package that the record company put together. And then there was the real Whitney Houston. So then when people see the, this, this quote unquote real Leandria Johnson versus the package, then they're like, oh, my gosh, who is this and what is this? You know, the, the point that I'm making is there's the package of the of the uh, us artist and then there's the real of the artist and you people you cannot get caught up in the in the package of the artist and understand that they are people as well <laughs> but at the same time the artist has to understand that because if you are in the gospel music industry there is a lifestyle that come forth that should be coming forth from your life and so yes you are human yes you have weaknesses yes you are imperfect but do we put all the, those imperfections on parade? You know, there's a time and a place for everything. And one thing you have to t think about is that one thing she was talking about growing up 
in the church and seeing some things in the background. Let me tell you a little story right here. Now, when I started going back to church when I was around about 27, 28 years old, now the person that I hooked up with, and everybody know my testimony, the person that I hooked up with, he told me, he said, now, now I started going back to church and I actually got, got saved and all that good stuff. And so he told me, one thing he said is that don't allow for people in church to turn you off from the truth of God. And that's the truth right there. Too many times we look again at people and we forget the focus. And that's one thing I never forgot. I did not forget the focus that Jesus Christ was the focus. Not man, not organizations, not Church of God in Christ, First Baptist, not any of that. That was not my focus. And I understood that the people in the choir, the people in the band, the usher board, and the people that sitting on that pulpit can do anything stupid at any moment and any time. And therefore, will I be a little upset? Like, wow, man, you did that. But at the same time, I also looked at myself. Now, she mentioned stuff about gospel artists and the things that we would be surprised that if we knew, if we saw the behind the scenes and things of that nature, we would be really surprised. And I'm telling you, no, you wouldn't. No. Well, I put it like this, I wouldn't be surprised because in working where I worked in a studio, we did some photographs, we did some uh, uh, some photo work for a gospel artist. And quite frankly, I mean, the, the song that the gospel artist made, I love the song. He sang with the choir on an album. And I mean, the, that, that song used to just send me in all the time, every time I would listen to it. But what I can say is this, is that when we were doing the photo shoot, he came in not with his girlfriend, but with his boyfriend. He sure did. He came in with his boyfriend, just boldly and proudly, unashamedly, un, unabashedly. And, and, and just, I was like, wow, dude is out there, you know? And I'm like, I wonder how many other people in the gospel music industry Number one, know about that. Number two, are in that life. You know, there's a whole different, there's a difference between having the feelings and struggling. Uh, when I say struggling, meaning that you are fighting daily against any whatever proclivity that, you, you, that you're under. Because it's in that weakness that you, God's strength is made perfect. But how many have succumbed? And although they're gospel artists, they live that life. They live it. They are unashamed and like, well, this is the way God made me, you know, this and that. You know, I have to give a little respect to Tone. I mean, at least Tone came out and said, you know what? I can't do this. I can't do it two different ways. Let me tell you, I mean, it is, it, this. Yes, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And that's why I keep saying, don't get caught up in man. You get caught up in man. I mean, dude, quite frankly, I haven't bought a gospel song in so long simply because it, it's just too much. It's just too much. I used to go to a lot of musicals here in, uh, in well, I'm not in Atlanta anymore. My family, we're, we're all moving, but in, in, here in, uh, in Texas. But when I was in Atlanta, uh, younger, when I was in my 20s, and I started going back to church and I was uh, had just gotten saved again, I used to go to a lot of musicals. And those musicals are, you know, late night musicals. They would start at like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And, uh, you know, the banging choirs would come together and they would sing uh, gospel music, you know, to about 12 o'clock or whatever, sometimes a little later. And one thing I started noticing is that there was a lot of homosexual men that would be at those shows or that would be in within the choir. It was just too much. I mean, it was just it was just too much. And I was like, wow, you know, so is this what church is about? You know, all the all the gay boys come into the, you know, the singings and they're all in the choir and this and that. Yeah. So when she says stuff like that, it's like, mm, you know, mm, it, there's the, the people don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Don't don't even be surprised. Things did go down because they did go down at the church. The church split. There was a lot of gospel. There was a lot of backbiting. There was, I mean, there was a whole bunch of drama that went down when the church split. And I was like, wow, look at man. That's what I say. Look at man. Look at man. And people, we we're trying to justify saying God told us to do this. God told us to do that. You know, I, I don't know what God told you. But what I can say is this, is that you are not the author and the finisher of my faith. So therefore, whatever you do, I'm not, con <laughs> I'm not concerned. I mean, if it's crazy, yeah. But you know what? Hey, I take you with a grain of salt. Because at any moment in time, you could do something crazy that is out of line with God's word. And so therefore, for me to put my faith in you, 
then I'm setting myself up for depression, hurt, anger, and strife. I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing that. It's in Jesus and Jesus alone, the one who will not let you down. Now, you may want God to do this and do that, and God may sometimes say no, but he's not letting you down. He's taking you on a different path, and that's, that's something completely different. He said he will direct your path. Now, our flesh will want to go here. We want to make our own plans. We want to go to this place. We want to go to this school. We want to, be, we want to have that big international ministry. Maybe God just said, minister to the people on the streets. Because when you plant in that seed, you don't know that might be the person that, that gets on the plane and take it internationally. While you sitting there thinking that you got to have this big old ministry, we started off right here, and now we got all these, uh, 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 this big old building, and it looks like this huge edifice, and it's got gold, you know, toilet seats and all that kind of stuff. Man, come on. God didn't say all that. He didn't, didn't really say all that. Go forth. Preach the gospel. And yes, I know it costs to do some things of the gospel, but I tell you what, I've been doing this YouTube channel since, what, 2011? I mean, yeah, I have to pay for my uh, my internet, <laughs> but you know what? I'm reaching. Uh, I've reached a lot of people over the years, and I still get emails from people that keep saying thank you for what you said, thank you for sharing your testimony, thank you for the life that you led, and now watching God deliver you and set you free and set you up and be blessed the way He's blessed you. You know, yeah, I may not be driving this and having that and, and living in this you know six bedroom house with the four bathrooms and all that kind of stuff. But there's a joy in that I can look back and say, look what God has done in my life. And I'm trying not to get too happy right here. But I'm like, guys, get your eyes off of man. Get your eyes off of man. Organizations. That stuff is, I've seen it where it's becoming cultic. It's becoming like almost like a cult. The way people worship pastors and their first wives, first ladies, or whatever. It's, it's crazy. It is, stop it. Stop worshiping your pastor. He's just a man. Get in that word. Follow Jesus. Get into the word. Study to show thyself approved. Cut all that mess out. And she was right about it. A lot of it is just control. There's a lot of control that goes on in, in church. And uh, for those who are manipulative in that manner, be it emotional, physical, uh, psychological, there's a lot of control that happens a lot of times. And so you really have to be careful. And I'm not saying this to put church down and go into church because I encourage people to go to church and, 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 and be in church and be around of fellow believers because that's where you create community and you create unity. And, 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 and in the book of Acts, the church that they had going on uh, in those first four chapters, it was absolutely amazing. I've seen my church uh, uh, pull together and bless people and help people out. I mean, even when I was going through cancer, my church showed up and they showed out for me and my family. So church is very important. I do not despise the four walls of the church. So do not get me wrong. But what I do despise is that when people start worshiping the church, that's a whole different story. And then the church started taking that worship and controlling people with it. Then you start getting into that cult-like state. And you start saying people, you know, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that unless my pastor does it. Unless my pastor says we got to fast. Unless my pastor say this and that. Man, you better start fasting on your own. Why are you waiting on your pastor? You got the same Holy Ghost. Cut all that mess out. So quite frankly, that's really as much as I really want to say on it. There was a whole bunch of points that she brought up. I don't want to really want to get into all of it, but those are just a few that really stuck out to me. And there was something that she mentioned about abortion and, and Marvin and Winans and all of that. And it appears that there's a breakdown. But let me tell you, I feel her on one sense, but then on, on another sense when it comes to, you know, when she said about the First Amendment right and all those kinds of things. It's like, uh, you know, yeah, you can say what you want to say. It's like right now I can say whatever I want to say. But at the end of the day, as a believer, there's something I'm just not going to say. You know, I think even as, as one who's quote unquote made his life public in a sense and, and, and carries, the, carries the, the banner of Jesus Christ, then I'm, there are some things I'm just not going to do and, and, and or say. And if I do say them, then it comes, trust me, people have come into my comments and say, well, James, maybe you shouldn't have said it like this. Or, James, that came across a little, you know, arrogant or whatever. And you know what? I went back and apologized to people. And if I, I've said, you know what? If I came across this way or that way, then I truly apologize because that was not my intent. So what I do want to say is that, um, Leandria, you know, God bless you. And yes, church can be very frustrating. Yes, church can really wear you down. 
So never lose faith in Christ. Keep your heart focused and turn towards righteousness. And just watch him. Just watch God do some amazing things because you have an anointing and a gift. And it's going to be challenged. It is going to be challenged. Satan is going to do everything he can to keep it buried. And if he has to send you through, and if, and, and if you have to go through some church hurt, then it, God will allow that to come, come into your life. But then he won't put more on you that you can't bear and that you can press through. So anyway, I encourage you, sister. Y'all take care. Thank you for listening. And remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. Holla.